Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Teuta Avdemetai, and I'm a researcher and policy advisor based in Kosovo. I've been researching uh, violent extremism in the Western Balkans for over four years, alongside with uh, extremist propaganda, as well as reintegration programs. Uh, before I go on with my presentation, I would like to take a minute to just uh, for us to think, you know, when you think about drivers of violent extremism, so what are some of the main three factors that come to mind? So usually, um, whenever I ask this question to an audience, uh, usually the main responses that I get include poor economic conditions, so a search for a sense of belonging or a desire to belong to a greater cause, as well as marginalization. And more often than not, um, what is missing may be trauma. So as my presentation ta uh, gives it away, uh, today I'm going to talk about trauma and violent extremism. And I'm going to uh, share some of my insights, uh, drawing on my experience uh, interviewing family members of foreign fighters, as well as women returnees in Kosovo from the foreign conflict zones in Syria and Iraq. Um, we've seen that in the recent years, the field of violent extremism studies has been growing. However, um, we also noticed that non-ideological factors such as trauma uh, have received relatively less attention when we try to explain these kinds of phenomena. So at the outset, I think um, we should ask the question, what is trauma? How well do we understand it? And how well are we able to identify it? So in general terms, uh, trauma is defined as an emotionally scarring experience, leaving someone with a deep sense of helplessness. But more specifically, um, as the American Psychiatric Association defines it, uh, trauma um, de uh, refers to as an exposure to actual or threatened death, serious injury or sexual violence, uh, whether directly experiencing it witnessing it in person as it occurs to someone else, hearing that it has happened to a close family, family member that you know or a friend, or just hearing about it, like all those details um, repeatedly, as is the case of first responders. And when we look at these elements that constitute trauma, we also know that one of the, one of the contexts in which we find these uh, we found trauma to be quite prevalent and present as a, at a great scale is during conflicts and during wars. And this brings me to Kosovo. So the country where I'm from uh, 20 years ago uh, experienced a terrible conflict. So the conflict left around 13,000 people killed, an estimated number of 20,000 women and men who were raped. Half the country's population, or about 1 million people, fleeing as refugees and around 1,600 people still missing. According to the World Health Organization, so witnessing violence and cruelty is often associated with uh, a range of psychological and behavioral problems, including anxiety, depression, suicidal behavior, as well as PTSD. And recently, there, has been, there have been studies in Kosovo that show that even several years after the war ended, um, rates of PTSD are still quite high among the civilian population who was exposed to trauma, among the former refugees, as well as the war veterans. And this brings us to the, to the next question. So why is this an issue, and why should we consider this when we talk about PVE and CVE research? Um, we know now that uh, violent extremism is a very, um, it's a very complex process. It's nonlinear. Um, it's hard to predict, and there, it's manifested through a broad spectrum. However, in order for us to understand um, the, the various factors that influence it, it's, it's important to broaden the range of these factors. And again, drawing in my experience, conducting these interviews with these groups of individuals, I, I believe that in the case of Kosovo especially, uh, trauma may be one of those understudied factors that could help us understand the radicalization process of foreign fighters. So just to put things into perspective, um, from Kosovo, there are around uh, 255 foreign fighters who travel from Kosovo to Syria. 
and uh, most of them went through Turkey. Uh, they took a very lengthy road and through various means of transport. Um, although the map is not supposed to illustrate the exact route, it just, it's meant to illustrate the distance between these two countries. Um, and so again, going back to why we should we consider trauma when we, con when we uh, think of PV and CV research. Um, I did not think of trauma uh, as one of those more relevant factors going into this research. However, the more uh, the interviews kept going on, I noticed that trauma was becoming a recurring theme. So vivid recollections of the war, uh, memories of the war started to become a pattern. Uh, for instance, in one, of, in one case of a foreign fighter, uh, a quite prominent one, um, I, know, I learned that while he was just a child, he was, he was exposed to extreme violence. He witnessed as his uh, sibling was heavily beaten, as well as his mother was being tortured. In another, in another case, uh, in the case of one of the first ever foreign fighters from Kosovo, um, just looking at one of the videos that he published in 2010, he talks about um, an Islam under threat, the narrative that we see being propagated many times later on. Um, but what's interesting to see is that during his video, during his um, remarks, he talks about, he, he makes many uh, references to the war. He makes constantly comparisons between the war in Kosovo and the conflict in Syria. And um, he talks about, again, brothers being tortured and sisters being raped. And um, if, we, if you look at the background of this specific foreign fighter, you'll notice that the place that, we, that he comes from has been one of those uh, regions that was most affected by conflict. And rape as a tool of war was quite widespread. So in spite of these cases, in spite of you know, us understanding these bits and pieces from different cases, there has been no serious effort uh, until now to fully explore this link. So this leaves us uh, with a knowledge gap. And there is no study that makes uh, this uh, evaluation, you know, whether there is a link between trauma and radicalization um, in Kosovo. I say Kosovo, but this can be also applicable in other similar contexts as, as well as beyond. And this, uh, again, leaves us with many questions. So first of all, does trauma play a role in the radical radicalization process? If so, to what extent? And I think this is the overarching question just to help us think, think through uh, this issue. Um, then, how do foreign fighters differ from the general population in the way they internalize or externalize trauma? So uh, again, if the general population or half the country's population was in, some, in one way or another exposed to trauma, what makes this individual so different? Um, some studies uh, on PTSD, on those who try to determine PTSD rates, seem to suggest that uh, having strong social support system may be one of those factors. But again, this was not done in, in relation to foreign fighters. This was done just in general. The next question is, how does previous war-related trauma influence their susceptibility to extremist propaganda? So how do these individuals uh, react when they, when they hear these um, narratives of the liberator and the oppressor? How does this um, you know, resonate with them? Does it resonate with them differently? How is a foreign fighter with war-related trauma different from a foreign fighter who has not uh, experienced conflict previously? So uh, what is the difference between a foreign fighter from the UK with a foreign fighter from Kosovo in this case? And even uh, just as important, how to, do we account for war-related trauma in relation to other traumatic events? So if we, if we take uh, war-related trauma as a proxy in a way, because we know that if you, you, if you experience conflict, you are likely to, to be exposed to trauma. But we cannot um, exclude other traumatic events that may influence another throughout their lifetime. So this is also something that we need to consider. But in order for us to think through this question, I do believe that it's important to have, uh, to have more research. 
to look more into, in depth into this question, to explore the link between trauma and radicalization, in po and especially in post-conflict countries. As well, so uh, if, we, if we determine, or if, it's, if trauma is indeed one of those factors that is relevant, then it's gonna have uh, important implications, especially for dis disengagement and reintegration programs. So as countries are becoming more proactive in, um, in bringing back their citizens from the foreign conflict zones in Syria and Iraq, I think it's important for us to explore this more in depth so not only previous war-related trauma, but even with these, uh, with these new pop population, for example, children who are growing up in Syria and Iraq. So how does trauma factor in into this? And I think we should, uh, we should along with this other range of factors, we should be paying uh, greater attention to this. We should focus on this and take this seriously. And I, I believe that if we, as researchers or as policymakers, uh, don't focus on this. Uh, so the question becomes, are we going to be able to break the cycle? Thank you. <laughs>